Mm. Don't forget, guys, if you want to see any more of these flowery films, please subscribe by hitting that subscribe button and also the notification bell. That way, you won't miss a film. Absolutely. We've got so many of them, haven't we, Lucy? Really there are some really super ones coming up as well. So, um, and you know how shy I get, so it's worth watching. Thanks, everyone. Can't quite believe that I'm welcoming you all, dear Fabulous Flowers listeners and avid floral followers, to this, episode 21 of our Fabulous Flowers TV podcast. Feeling like we really are beginning to get the hang of this, Paulie. Don't know about you. Mm -hmm. I've really, mm. um, it is, as always, my job to do the intro, a little bit of research, a few floral fluffs, because the whole thing really does hinge on one man, and that man is a flower genius, and that is our celebrity florist, Paulie Hawkins. And I'm more than delighted to say that we are once again in the same space, recording this podcast for you today. Over to you, Paulie. Lucy, as ever, it's just gorgeous to be here and do the whites of the eyes with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah Isn't it is. Great? Yeah, yeah. On this lovely sunny day in a quiet corner in your cosy kitchen. And um, it's just wonderful. I think when we see each other in the flesh, it adds a bit of a sort of je ne sais quoi, I would say. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Je ne sais quoi is so very special. Mm. And um, thought I'd throw in a bit of French today, Lucy. And yes, keep it lovely. Fresh. May lovely. we? Mm? May we, may we. Um, so this week, Paulie, we are also filming this. So anybody that is watching on YouTube, hello on YouTube. Um, we can share all sorts of things like this and Fabulous Flowers films on our TV channel. But it seemed like an opportunity not to be missed, didn't it, Paulie? To Absolutely. get us in the flesh on both sides. Absolutely. Yeah. Caring and sharing and sharing all the floral loveliness. In these times. Yeah, yeah, in these times. Yeah. So, um, if you'd be kind enough to share with us what our floral focus for episode 21 is going to be. Well, Lucy, it would be an absolute pleasure, or as always. And it's an... A fo a f Do you know what? As ever, I've got the wrong teeth in. It's an absolute florist delight and a gardener's best friend, mm. particularly in autumn. Mm. And it is the chrysanthemum. The chrysanthemum. And really and truly, it's, I don't know where to start with this one, Lucy. It's such a go-to amazing flower to use. But here goes. Mm. It's kind of, it's a flower which seems to receive an awful lot of maligning, I mm. would say. I don't know what that is in French. And Mal comes from the French, mal, mal. bad. Oh, yeah, mal. So bad mal. press, I suppose. Mal, malheureuse. Yeah, mal, bad press. Mm. Oui. Um, but when you look at it closely, the chrysanthemum bloom is a thing of incredible beauty mm. and... Um, it's very kind of intricate and quite mesmerizing and um, it looks like one of these funky kaleidoscope things from the 70s um, any youngsters listening you might have to google what a kaleidoscope is but you'd look through it and it would show lots of funky sort of psychedelic images that to me mm. is what a lovely chrysanthemum looks like don't you reckon yes you? i do i completely agree and in fact you very kindly popped to the market this morning and brought with some superb examples of chrysanthemums that are sitting on my kitchen table as we speak and they are glorious paulie absolutely uh, glorious they are they're a lovely sort of can i call it wine or mm. burgundy oh always call it wine or <laughs> oh yes vin du vin mm. may we oui. i think it is but i have to say they've for the last few years, they've um, they've sort of gained a bit of a cult following, um, and they used to be thought of as sort of you know a bit of a naff flower, but you know something for a continental funeral mm. or rather unimaginative, plinkety plonkety floristry and a staple of the cutting garden and the allotment, a bit of a flower ordinaire mm. I would say, um, but I just adore the big massive blooms. Um, they're grown over here by our wonderful British growers. They're just dreamy. Great big pom-pom type heads. They're so groovy and, and, and each petal sort of adds to the overall perfection of this truly fabulous flower. Mm. Are you a fan? Um, I, I suppose my hesitation would say no. But mm. I, when I say no, I, I mean I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fan. They're kind of, they are a bit, as you would say, probably Marmite. But I think I could grow to love them if I use them correctly, Paulie. That's what I'm going to say there. So I'm not going to rule them out, no. but I'm not going to welcome them in with open arms quite yet. No, they've got quite a mumsy image, haven't they? Yes. And a bit granny and a bit yes. kind of... But all that is sort of is, is kind of fading away. And I suppose if you put them in one of your more modern or stylish type vessels, you could certainly Absolutely. bring them into the 21st century that way. Absolutely. Mm. And they're so in season at the market at the moment. I was there this morning. This is why I look like this. 
for those listeners. I'm looking a bit kind of rough, but that's the market. Early starts, early starts. So that's every day then as you go to the market? Well, most days. Every day. Know, every just day. Checking. Every day is a flowery day mm. in my in my world. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, they're just so beautiful. They come in sort of a wonderful, clean, sort of fresh white, pale, creamy colours and punchy yellows. Uh, and also a rather charming burgundy, which is like, similar to the one we have mm. on the table. But the pale pinks are so pretty as well and wistful. And there's a wonderful washed out lavender one, which is just wonderful. It's sort of lavender pale grey, which is kind of very sort of um, on trend mm. at the moment. But um, they all arrive from the growers in wonderful boxes arranged in rows with sort of great military precision. Oh, lovely. Um, and so, so they stay immaculate um, for, for us florists quite fussy about the condition mm. of the flowers mm. um so next time at the market i'll take a little snap and pop it up on yes. fabulous flowers tv instagram that would be good. so all you lovely listeners can see how they arrive in their boxes and there's something very very pleasing mm. about the flowery discipline of our british growers you know it's it's all done with military precision um and it's so important to support them mm. and um, very much so yeah yeah and some have been going for countless generations lou i mean yeah, as you know we did a few flowery uh Mets, didn't we? About yeah, them. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and some of the flower farmers in this country are just amazing. And the variety of bloom mm. they produce, it really is a, a good case for a grown, not flown swap. Massively. Maybe sort of treat yourself to the occasional something from out of this country. But really, you mm. could go British all the way through the year. And really. so what if they don't last for sort of yeah. forever? You know, you're not as a cucumber. No. No, unless you're yeah. creating a lot of uh, Hendrix. Yes. They can go quite quickly on those yes. nights. Those nights, you can whiz through a cucumber. Mm. Um, but they've got such a wonderful statement look in a vase. Um, they, they've got that sort of wonderful 1950s vibe. It's mm. it's shamelessly a bit camp and blousy. And, and it's, I think it's a nostalgic crowd pleaser. And, yeah. um, you know, they don't have to look old-fashioned and granny, as you just said, Lucy. They've, they can also look a bit cool and a bit mm. modern en masse in a dome. It's kind of rather chic and minimalistic. Yeah. And I often do that for different interior decorators and magazine shoots. But, um, you know, they're very easy to look after in a, in a floral way. Mm. As I always say, a very clean vase. Yes. Very, lots of very lovely clean water. Stems well stripped. Yeah. Keep changing the water. Keep chopping the stems. And they'll last for an, a an age, mm. really. Um, well, that's good to know. It's always nice to have something mm. that that does last for a while, um, so you can relax, sit mm. back, relax, and enjoy it for a, for a week or a couple of weeks, rather than always having to fuss and recut and chuck out and get more. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as I said earlier, they, chrysanthemums in different countries mean different things. Mm. I mean, I a, a few years ago I did a a massive party for um, someone called Ivana Trump. Who's that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. She was um, she was um, yes, a lovely client. Um, I, I, the party planner said, could you do something very English? So I filled her amazing um, Cadogan Square apartment with herbaceous loveliness. Mm. Just dreamy. And apparently she arrived in wasn't too keen on it. Oh. That kind of look. Right. So she wanted it to be red and white. Right. Um, chrysanthemums and carnations in red and white. And of course the customer's always right. So I cleared it all um, and went to the market, still open, luckily. Uh, got lots of red carnations, lots of white chrysanthemums and put them in Nirvana's flat for the party. And she loved it and it was a huge success. And, you know, the customer is always right and you must do what they like. Mm. But for me, um, it, it's kind of quite superstitious and blood and sorry, and uh, red and white flowers mean blood and bandages, as you probably know. Oh, I didn't the, know that. From the war. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so oh. it kind of jars for me to yes, put red, red and white, white together. in a vase because mm. it does mean that. Mm. And I don't know. Anyway, what Ivana wants? Ivana gets. I say so. I Except say so. Uh, I, yes. I mean, have, do you, uh, how do you feel about red and white flowers? Yeah, do no, I don't like that. Now you've said that. No, mm. blood and bandages. I love a red flower and equally I love a white flower. But I have to say for me, that would be too much of a juxtaposition, I think, the red and the white. Mm, yeah rather harsh unless it was for a particular logo or reason or yes. you know in which yes, case yes. on you go but yes. um you know but no it's i'd a say bit no like red white and blue flowers yeah i, I agree for a reason then yeah. that's fine yeah but if not if you're just doing flowers just do flowers yes. and sort of stop it with the silly yeah, yeah. I mean, do a get do a bit of clashing but i you agree know, my other half stevie um his grandfather, Wilfred mm. James Poston. Wonderful um, name. Amazing name. And a very proud Welshman. 
and he grew award-winning blooms back in Wales, back in, oh gosh, the turn of the last century. And uh, he won so many competitions and they actually named a variety after him. So A variety of chrysanthemums? Yes, it's called, Brilliant. It's called the Poston Bloom and Aww. I feel a bit proud actually. Of course. No, stop um, welling up. No, no crying, no sobbing yeah. here. No, keep, it was all about cheeriness, no tears. Darling. Um, so people can be very snooty about chrysanthemums. Yeah. Um, but I think... I think we're fans of them here. I think we're um, fans. I think, and, and also, you're right, we just need to inspire ourselves to use them a little better, perhaps. And I do think to know them is to love them. I completely agree. So, uh, I found out a few little chrysanthemum Ooh, facts. Love um, this sometimes called mums or chrysants. I've heard that, chrysants. Um, they're a flowering plant of the genus chrysanthemum, and they are in that family, Paulie, that we've touched on many times, which is the Asteraceae family. Mm. And uh, they include the, f- the sunflower, the daisy, asters, and many more. And the name Asteraceae actually comes from the genus aster, and that comes from the ancient Greek meaning star. And that refers to the star-like form of the inflorescence or flower formations on the plant. And looking at the croissants you've brought, or the mums that you, ooh, uh, mums, um, <laughs> that you've brought today, Paulie, they do look like a sort of a starburst, almost like yes. a firework starburst in a way. Um, so I can totally see where they got that name from. A bit like one of those fifties mirrors or clocks that. Kind yes. Of have yes. Absolutely. You know, it has that kind of. It's very nostalgic feel. Totally, to totally. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, uh, actually, when you think of a member of the fam- flower family literally like stars, I suppose it's like a, a star burst in any shape or form. So, that's, I think that's a great, a great name. Mm, yeah. I think they're wonderful. And, and I didn't realise they were native um, to East Asia and, um, and also Northeastern Europe. Mm. And most species of chrysanthemum do actually originate from East Asia. Uh, the centre of diversity as is in China. Mm. Um, that's not diversity, the pop group, the dance troupe. No, no, no. no. Um, and they, they're simply countless horticultural varieties and cultivars of this incredible star performer. Ah, see what I did there? Yes, I did see what you did there, Paulie. You do <laughs> like that up. term, star performer. And right. this is literally a star performer. So well done. I see what you did there. Clever you. <laughs> Uh, chrysanthemums were also first cultivated in China as a flowering herb. So before they were a flower even, they were used as a herb. Mm. And that was back in the 15th century BC. There are over 500 varieties that have been recorded by uh, 1630. Goodness me, that's a lot. Um, But by the year 2014, it was estimated that there were over 20,000 chrysanthemum varieties in the world. Goodness me. And 7,000 of those varieties are in China alone. That's what I would call a prolific bloom, Paulie. I'm absolutely staggered. Yeah, amazing. I mean, uh, listen, listeners, we're not going to show 20,000 varieties of them, (laughs) just to quickly get that one out there. Podcast (laughs) number (laughs) 19,999. And again, it's the chrysanthemum. Yeah. Um, But the name chrysanthemum um, is also derived from the ancient Greek chrysos, uh, which means gold, Mm. and Athanon, Athamanum, Athamon. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. Which means flower. So lovely. gold flower. Isn't that lovely? Mm. And here's a great floriography fun fact, Lucy. Go. Chrysanthemum plants yeah. have been shown to reduce indoor air pollution by the NASA Clean Air Study. So that's rather pretty. That's, that's a breath amazing. of fresh air. <laughs> that is a breath. Gosh, you're on form today. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yellow and white chrysanthemum flowers of, uh, of a certain species are boiled to make a tea in some parts of East Asia. And the resulting beverages are simply known as chrysanthemum tea. Gosh, it's quite that's imaginative, isn't, isn't it? it? <laughs> in Korea, they're used to flavour a rice wine. Chrysanthemum leaves are steamed or boiled and used as greens, especially in Chinese cuisine. And the flowers may be added to dishes such as misian broth or some soups to enhance the aroma. And small chrysanthemums are used in Japan as sashimi garnish. So there we are. There are many different forms of chrysanthemum. And for details of their classification, you can visit the National Chrysanthemum Society website, Mm. where you'll find lots of helpful information. But um, there are also many ways of growing them. Some methods of cultivation are easy, others slightly more complicated. For example, later grown chrysanthemums chrysanthemums need to be grown under glass to bring them into flower later in the season. It's all all about that staggering Mm. thing, isn't it? 
Um, and the same goes for cut flower chrysanthemums, where production under glass uses curtains and light to mimic the correct season to mm. produce flowers all year round. A whole world of technology complexity. Yes. It's, I mean, that's amazing. And I know that when I first started doing floristry, they were known as AYR. Pass us some AYR. AYR meaning all year round. Oh. And chrysanthemums were known as AYR. Oh, I like that. It's yes, very good. Yes, I know, but there are... Um, but newly propagated plants need to be hardened off because the, the young little tender shoots yes. um, by being placed in probably a cold frame. Okay. Um, and plant out in mid-May. Uh, but once the risk of frost has passed, and yep. space them about 45 centimetres. That's 18 inch. Mm. Is 18 inches apart. Mm-hmm. Um, choose a sheltered, sunny position. Ideally, improve the soil by digging in some well-rotted organic matter, which we love, yeah. and some nice homemade compost during the winter. Mm. Uh, with top-ups of fertilizer or grow more and uh, other fertilizers mm-hmm. in April or May to sort of keep it going. Mm. But a top dressing of nitrogen-rich fertilizer is often applied in June to encourage growth. Yeah. Or for those organic gardeners amongst you, some dried poultry manure pellets, but they're a bit whiffy. Yes. Mm, not so nice. But um, depending on the habit and flower type, the past will require pinching out. Mm. I might say that again. The past will require. That's a typo, isn't it, from me? The. Pinching out. You know, you're pinching out, then you do. I'll do it again. Mm. Depending on habit and flower type, just pinch out the middles. Yeah. Um, and the disbudding will sort of help more sort of. Vigor. Vigor. That's the yeah. one I'm doing. More vigorous growth. And uh, But do ask your garden centre advice when purchasing because um, they're normally mm. too happy to help. Yeah. Fair enough. All very useful. Thanks for that. Mm. Um, Now we should move on to our floriography fun fact proper for this week. And that is sedum. Something I really don't know very much about at all, actually, Paulie. Sedum. Well, I know them. They're somewhat less used, perhaps, in the home, certainly. Mm. But um, they're very much on my list to use in many ways. When I see this rather simple and architectural bloom... I know we're definitely embracing the mellow fruitfulness of autumn, which mm. we're definitely seeing out of your kitchen window today, Lucy. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. It's an understated and self-assured little flower, and it's no show-off. It's particularly happy to let the other flowers to be the tarty attention seekers, mm. and it's just such a lovely late summer autumn thing for... Yeah. Well, it's floral really decoration thing. yes it's, it's more of a it's more of a flower than a thing yeah um but it's more of a, a, a it's lovely for a, a late summer floral decoration yeah um if you're using some hot border flowers I'd yes say. yes um have you got some in your garden lou no i don't oh that's a lie i do mm. i've got little ones in a um in a couple of the things on the wall what do you call them you know baskety no you know planters sort of that are on the wall high up Yes, those. those. They're coming, they're anyway, they're in there because I did say to the nice. garden centre... Oh, they like a succulent thing. Oh, yeah. Just around the corner. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Because they, I was struggling to find anything that, if I wasn't around to water, mm. would last. And so they suggested I tried succulents. Mm. And so I do have a sedum and a couple of other little things in there. And they're going great guns. And I think drought tolerance is a bit of a serious moment. But I mean, yeah. I think, you know, moving forward... I think we should be planting things like rosemary and lavender and more Mediterranean stuff. Yes, uh, as our climate. Vegetable, vegetable, no, valuable water. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. But um, I also like to use this this pretty muted sort Mm. of colour with... Mm. um, with their lovely pistachio succulent leaves in um, in an arrangement with other pale shades and mm. soft greens for a, a sort of calm, soothing look. And, and it's it's very versatile in that respect. You can yeah. use it with some very pale coloured uh, other blooms. And um, a quick gardening moment. Mm-hmm. I have actually planted it en masse in Sussex with some pale Russian sage. I'll pop some pictures of Russian sage up. It's also known as Parovska. <laughs> Oh, love it. We're whizzing around the world today, aren't we? Yeah. Um, and the, the, the companion planting mm. uh, of those two just looks so lovely. That, that soft pink with the pale lavender Perovska. And um, I, it looks so lovely. I'm just going to give myself a flowery pat on the back for that, Lucy, because it Good did idea. look rather lovely. I'll give um, you a pat on the back for real then. Yeah. Thank you, thank mm-hmm. you. Um, so it's a lovely, lovely architectural flower and it dries really, really well. Uh, it's the sort of thing you can just... Pop in a vase in the kitchen, but I mean, to dry it, it's very easy. Tie a bit of string around it, pop it somewhere dark for a few weeks till it goes crispy. Yeah. Pop it in a vase and then all through the winter months, it'll 
give that kind of um, French Impressionist studio look. Oh, lovely. Slightly architectural and mm. we all like a bit of rustic charm. May we, Lucy, may mm. we. May we, may we. Gosh, we're really majoring on the French today here, Paulie. <laughs> uh, I found out that sedum is a large genus of flowering plants and they are in the family of the Crassulaceae. That's very good. Thank you. Um, and they're commonly known as stone crops, and they contain about 400 to 500 species, of which the sedum is one. They are succulent plants, as you mentioned, um, which means that their parts are thickened, fleshy, and engorged. <laughs> <Do you? Sorry. laughs> Usually to retain... <laughs> Stop it. Usually to retain water in arid climates <sighs> and soil conditions. Sedum are leaf succulents, and the word succulent, <laughs> stop it, poorly. Breathing. <sighs> Sedum are leaf succulents. The word succulent comes from the Latin succus, meaning juice or sap. Found primarily in the northern hemisphere, but extending to the southern hemisphere in South Africa and Africa, sedum plants vary from annual to creeping herbs and shrubs. The plants have water-storing leaves and their flowers usually have five petals. Seldom do they have four or six petals. I thought that was quite interesting. Mm. They are typically twice as many stamens as petals. So they're obviously good for pollinators mm. then, mm. I assume. Sedum can provide a roof covering. Now, this is something that I think we've seen more and more of in the yeah, last decade. It's a funky look. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's a really great fun fact. And here is a couple more. That the Ford's Dearborn Michigan truck plant has a living roof with 454,000 square feet of sedum. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, the Rolls-Royce motor car plant in Goodwood in England has 242,000 square feet of roof complex covered in sedum. That's the largest in the United Kingdom. And the Nintendo in America, that roof is covered in some 75,000 fair squeet of... Fair squeet? <laughs> Square if you must, feet. If you must. Fair squeed. <laughs> um, 75,000 feet of, of sedum as well. And the Javits Center in New York City is covered in 292,000 square feet of sedum. That's incredible. And as always, I suppose, because it's photosynthesizing, you really can't get much more of a carbon neutral roof than that, I'd say, Paulie, wouldn't you? Oh, that's amazing. That's mm. an awful lot of sedum. And it is. I'm quite tempted to go because I live just not far from um, Goodwood. And I might go and take a little peek at the Royal Royce yeah. Museum. Perhaps we could go and film there. Yes. That would be fun. Let's ask. Just, just keep your eye out here, listeners. Yeah. Um, but in the language of flowers and messages they send, sedum is recognised as a symbol of peace and tranquility. Mm. Succulents as a whole symbolise a timeless, enduring love because of their tendency to store water in leaves and stems for hard times ahead. Oh, they're good, aren't Aww. they? So with those two sentiments combined, the seed and flowers really do offer a beautiful message of everlasting calm, peace, and perseverance. Um, gung, gung, gung. I'm uh, feeling very yen zenish. Yes, very zenish. Golly, well, that's all rather lovely. So, quick update on our social oh, media time, absolutely. I think, Paulie. Go, go. Um, go, go. Firstly, a big thank you to Jane Berkvist up in Uppsala, which is north of Stockholm in beautiful Sweden. Jane sent us a really wonderful photo of some sunflowers that she picked from a field, which is apparently absolutely chock-a-block, full of sunflowers, and it's right in front of her house, lucky Jane. So she popped them in a rather quirky vessel, Paulie, didn't she? And mm. yeah, we love the ingenuity there, Jane, so well done. If you'd like to see that, pop over to our Instagram, and that is at fabulousflowerstv, all one word. Yes, and it's re it's a really brilliant, fun picture. It's yeah. worth taking a little peek at, listeners. Yeah. And well done, Jane. And uh, and Jane's also sent us a question, mm. and um, that was about popping a drop of bleach. Yes, in the one water of your things you mentioned. Yeah. Bars. So just to clarify that yeah. one for you, um, and anyone who might be wondering, yeah, it's a tip that I often suggest. Yeah. Um, particularly using more woody stem plants and also ones that go a bit mushy. Yes. Sunflowers, yes. stocks, etc. Yes. Um, just a tiny bit of bleach, but. Obviously, do tell other people around in case they splash the water on your favourite carpet or... And what does it do mm. then? It just stops the bacteria, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. So it stops the water it going... It doesn't benefit the flowers at all, but it just keeps the, everything crisp and not turning into a soup. Yes. Okay. Um, well, that is a great tip, and I do do that myself now, and it really does present... Uh, sorry, it really does prevent whiffy water. 
Don't like whiffy water. No, no one likes whiffy water. <laughs> um, we also have some great films now up on our Fabulous, Fle- Fabulous Flowers TV channel. So I hope everyone's subscribing there. And if not, please do. Your support counts. We will keep making more films if you keep subscribing. So tell mm-hmm. a friend, tell your mum. Just get them all to subscribe and then you can see Paulie in action doing some incredible, beautiful and majestic and glorious and talented flower arrangements. (laughs) And um, in fact, we made a few at the Real Flower Company in Hampshire at the beginning of the summer with the very wonderful and gorgeous Rose B. Morton. And some of those films are on roses. Um, and Paulie, you've done a, a, a little arrangement of those. A rose bowl, I think it was. And also we got to use, or you got to use, the enormous array of, of incredible flowers they have around that farm, didn't you? Oh you just God. used all sorts. It was just amazing. It was such a treat. Um, and in the film, and Lucy filmed very talentedly, um, me making something out of these beautiful arrangements, a sort of classic rose bowl. But I almost was drunk on the scent of them. Yes. It was so amazing and amazing yeah. foliages. Um, and I loved, loved just looking around the farm and just immersing myself and chatting with the gorgeous Rosie yes. who invented the Real Flower Company, didn't she? Yes, she did. And she couldn't be a lovely person. Yeah. And we've got that extra film actually still to come, which we will be um, releasing quite shortly. And that is you having a, a lovely sit down and a chat to Rosie about everything. And yes. that was great. Absolutely. And there's, there's um, you know, there are, there are please, so please do hit that subscribe button and uh, turn on that notification bell and uh we will be notifying you of all these future fabulous films moving forward, ABC. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, that's good. Well, I'd say that's it for another week, Paulie. Um, my goodness me. Uh, that's just flown by, actually, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Yeah. Whiz by, whiz um, by. So I see that you've been eating the Florentines I put on the table there. I just had two. Mm. So I'm going to put the kettle on and make you another cup of tea. I think I'll have Earl Grey. What do you want, Paulie? Oh, I might have a bit of an Earl Grey. Mm. And, um, we'll both hash, have a bit of Earl Grey, whoever he is, <laughs> and then we'll have a Florentine or would you like one of all his cupcakes that she's made there over on the cake stand? I'll just have both. Okay, perfect. So until next week, everybody, um, it's going to be a goodbye from me. Goodbye. And a b- big goodbye from me. Bye. Oh, I think that was very good. Quite fun.